So, obviously lots of irons in the fire this year with new products and things we're working on and branched out into new lines that we've never done before and we're super excited about it. Obviously the clothing is uh, probably the most noticeable addition to our lineup this year. You guys have seen the soft shells, the De Havilland pant and jacket. We'll go over some of the features of that. Our goose down puffies. There's the Grumman Goose Down Jacket and Pant. We're gonna go over that. We have our Chill Coot Sleeping Bag, zero degree and 15 degree we'll show you. Uh, this guy right here is called the new Kiowa, uh, 3200 cubic inch internal frame pack. It's kind of the big brother to the very popular Avail. Uh, a lot of cool things going on with this. That's all on top of our backpack line. So lots of new things cooking here. Zero degree bag is right at two pounds, nine ounces. Okay. Um, insulated collar, magnetic snap around the neck, traditional mummy style cut. It's got an articulated toe box on it too, so the bag kind of cuts up. It's got a differential cut, which means the inside liner is a bit smaller than the outside. So I'm saying this is? when you, uh, yeah, well, yeah insulated well, collar around exactly. the neck. Oh, so you can put that, that around this bag now? Correct. Keep all the heat in. Huh. If you've ever used these before, they work insanely efficiently. Like you snap that on and it's yeah. immediately traps a ton, ton of heat. Uh, again, just like the puppies, specs for specs, the two sleeping bags are industry leading on, uh, on the design and price point of the final bags here. Yeah, 15 degrees 499, zero degrees 549. What's this one way? The 15 degree bag I think is right at two pounds, like two pounds one ounce. So the liner and the shell are Pertex, you guys familiar with Pertex? So Pertex is a pretty well known, and it's mostly an outdoor space, just manufacturer of non-coated downproof textiles. So when you look at downproof textiles, there's a couple different ways to make a textile downproof. Um, the most common is to put a coating on them, like a PU coating or some sort, which decreases breathability. The other way without a coating is really has to do with the way the textile is manufactured and the weave of it, yep. um, which will increase breathability and make them lighter weight textiles and lots of times quieter textiles. Sometimes when you see a crunchy nylon, it's because it has a coating on it. Anyway, Pertex is one of the <coughs> most well-known for making nylon, now-improved nylon shells that are uncoated. Um, and they make really nice stuff. Real soft to the touch, you know, the hand feel, super breathable. And also the, the way they manufacture the textile makes it highly water resistant. You know, it's very tapered, right? So yeah. it's designed to be a backpack. So you have good shoulder girth, but it tapers down pretty small on the knees. I mean, as far as... I think the girth was 60 inches on the inside so or wide, something. Right? So it's pretty it's wide. It's wide, then. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, again, you know, it's got a three-quarter inch, three-quarter length zipper, a tapered cut. It's all, des it's designed to be, you know, a lightweight, compressible backpack. It's not, you know, there's some... Some situations in certain bags where you feel claustrophobic almost because yeah. you can't move in them. And I haven't had that issue with this one at all. But it's a fully differential cut bag, uh -huh. which is nice. If you what? That, that means differential cut. So it's, it's essentially a way of sewing a bag. Some of the wet higher and western mountaineering bags are similar. Um, but essentially the inside liner is sewn in a different shape as the outside liner. So you don't compress when you push it out with your feet or elbows. You don't compress the loft oh, wow. and get cold spots. So the easiest way to kind of explain it if you had another sleeping bag that wasn't differential cut, this is a really good demonstration, but if you push your hands out on the inside of the foot box here, you can see it doesn't compress any of the loft. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, where a sleeping bag is not differential cut, when you do that and you push it out, you're going to do this and you get cold line. spots. Um, so that's an important, of high-end sleeping bags, that's an important uh, design feature. It makes them much harder to construct, but it helps you with those cold spots. Another cool thing that's pretty unique uh, is our collar on it. Yeah, so instead of having a collar that has cinch cords and you have to use two hands to do it, it's elastic with a magnet, so you get in and out of the neck baffle real easily. Uh, so that works really cool. Or some sleeping bags, you know, that has a cinch cord and you got to reach over and do it with two hands or whatever. We only have one, one length, um, which is most comparable to most people's talls. Up to 6'6". Six, six. Yeah. It's, I would, you know, if you're going to compare those other sleeping bags, you'd look, it's more comparable to manufacturers long than a regular. Mm -hmm. Even if you're a short guy, you know, our perspective is it's not much of a disadvantage to have a longer bag. You lost some of your stuff and your clothes down in there anyway. Yeah. 
So to have a shorter bag, you know, to reduce a little bit of weight. We actually had the bags tested with Kansas State University where they put a copper mannequin inside the bags. And you do not have to go through that process when you manufacture a sleeping bag. There's no standard. You can, you can make a sleeping How's bag shoulder and call feel? it whatever you want. Mm -hmm. We shipped ours off and had them tested. Yeah, 850, it's actually 850 plus. It's upwards of like 865, Phil. Um, yeah, you nailed the spell. It's really good. Just knocked it out. Yeah, they're, they're incredibly cozy. But yeah, screw her up and try them on. I think this one's. Yeah, so we will branch into more uh, colors here, probably within this year. Okay. Uh, but. True, I mean, it looks great. True to our, true to our brand. Sure. It started with great. gray. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. I understand that. Just looking at pictures like that, man, it looks awful shiny. Yeah. That's, oh. back here. That's, That's just back That's the zero or 15. No. That's the zero. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. So that Already. It's just been fun, but you know, we have four pieces of clothing as you know now. And, uh, That's good. Regular XL. So. Yeah. Should we? Full zips on the puffy pants here as well. Yeah, let's move up to the top and we'll come all the way in then. The pants are the same textile as the jacket, so very similar, super yeah. lightweight. 15, 20 denier per tex. So a full zip off, which is nice, lots of down pants, you know, just zip up to the waist. Yeah, the, full, the full zip off is just strip way better. I'll tell you a little bit about the down reason. It's the hyper dry, it's a hydrophobic DWR treated down. Um, so this is a, a downproof Pertex fabric, so the feathers aren't going to be poking through, you know. Mm -hmm. And then the feathers inside are highly water resistant, DWR treated. Uh, about six, or eight, eight sixty uh, filled down. So really high end down feathers inside of these things. Jeff knows the story of the down in a little bit more detail than I do. Ally feather down. Pretty reputable down mm -hmm. supplier. It's all it's it's goose downs from China. Okay. But it's all RDS certified and sourced. It's actually kind of cool. The Allied Feather Down has a program where they track. You can track mm -hmm. it right there. So if you put that code in, track it'll show you exactly the fill power, the feather to down cluster ratio, uh, exactly where the down was from. So it's very transparent of all the sourcing of it. Nice. And then we use, they have a couple of different products, but the product we use is called Hyper Dry, mm -hmm. and it's a DWR treated down. Cool. But yeah, the cool thing is, which a lot of down suppliers don't do, is just show you the exact specs of a lot, because you buy, you purchase down in lots, mm -hmm. and it, it varies, right? Because it's a natural commodity. So this will, when you track that code, it'll show you the exact specs of that particular lot that we use for that mm -hmm. manufacturing run. So for example, like the, the, this production run of down products, it's actually 865 fill power when they tested it. And it's actually 93.7 down clusters of feather ratio. So everybody says, you know, 850 plus because yeah. it's just, it's a gauge of where it is. It's a minimum of 850 fill power. So they test each of those production runs so you can see exactly what it is. So it gives you um, some more transparency of where it's sourced and the quality of it. So it's really high. It's, some of the best down you could buy. Yeah, my favorite thing about the, the puffy is just the packability of them. All the down I've ever owned is just like, yeah. they're nice, but they didn't pack worth a damn. Mm -hmm. And both are puffy pant and jacket packed down to like suit cap size. Nothing. Perfect for backpacking. Just specifically for backpacking, so super light and packable. A down jacket weighs 11 ounces, you know, and it gets this big and it's mm -hmm. super warm. All those kind of products were pretty well tailored for backpacking from the long cut, you know, on the tail on yeah. the jacket to the contour waist design of the pants. It's all pretty much designed with the philosophy that you're gonna be using these things on backpack hunts. Jacket and pant made out of the same four-way stretch DWR treated fabric here. Um, obviously an athletic cut, kind of a longer tail in the back, designed for backpacking. Pockets are articulated and designed in to still be functional while backpacking. Massive pit zips, obviously no camouflage. We went with color blocking, um, which is just kind of true to our brand to stick with solid colors. Um, articulated hood, what am I missing on the jacket, Jeff? Slightly brushed fleece backer on the inside for a soft finish on the inside. The downside to not having a soft shell or really where they shine and what they're used for is you don't want to wear either your puffy or your rain jacket bucking through brush or anywhere where it's going to get ruined because you poke, you rip a hole in your rain jacket, it's going to leak, 
obviously all puffies are really lightweight nylon material. So the whole point of soft shell is protection for your other layers, protection from you from the elements. Um, so what we wanted to make was a super breathable soft shell that you can hike in and not feel lots of other soft shells that are too thick. You instantly feel like you're just sweating in them and you want to take it off. So finding a textile that breathed really well that you could actually use as a layering piece over the puffy jacket if you're going to go move from glassing spots and it's cold enough to wear it or whatever was important. So that's why we didn't use any laminates. It's not a wind stopper and that's intentional. Um, it is highly wind resistant. It's DWR, it's water resistant, but but that's kind of the, you know, the pros and cons of how you and when you should use a soft shell in your layering system. Other than that, it's um, it's really a great just everyday jacket, like what Brady's wearing. Yeah, and that's what most people probably buy, yeah. honestly buy soft shells for. We did strategically find that textile and design that jacket to be uh, a backpacking piece, and it works really well. This is the De Havilland pant, the uh, jacket's counterpart. A um, lot of cool things about this pant. So obviously massive side zips for dumping heat out of it. Cargo pockets oriented on the top of the thigh. Uh, very, very slender, slim waistline. And the idea with the entire waistline is to eliminate bunching of material underneath the belt of your fabric. So the kind of the keystone design of this whole pant is what we call the contour waist, which is this three inches of adjustability in the zipper. So whether you're losing weight on an extended hunt or you're layering for late season hunts, this zipper can be reset up to three inches different from where it started for a more accurate uh, fit in your waistline. And what this does is it, it's a perfect fit on your waist without traditionally bunching up material like this, which is gonna create a hot spot underneath the belt of a backpack. So a lot of guys will go on a 10 day sheep hunt and lose 10 pounds. Um, and whether you start your hunting season bigger than you end it, or you're just layering a bunch for cold weather hunts. Or if you're just in between sizes. Or right? if you're just so in between right there, sizes. You know. so just kind of a set it and forget it mentality. Uh, you're not fussing with this Velcro very often. Mm -hmm. um, I had set mine the day that I got my pants and I haven't touched it since. Um, but once you make those micro adjustments, it's still a fully functional zipper. Uh, no, no traditional button on it. We just have the snap and closure, belt loops all the way around. Um, quiet snaps on the cargo pockets. I don't. Wear, I haven't been wearing a belt with them, and I don't notice any difference. Yeah. I mean, this 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 buckle. The whole point of it is to work just as your top snap. You know, right. the reason you don't have a top snap is because when you adjust it, it overlaps, right? Uh -huh. So rather than having like different snap settings, right? You just have this adjustability. So this just replaces it. And I don't notice it as any different. Mm -hmm. It's not designed to be a belt, right? Like it has cinching, so when you adjust it, you can have it snug, but sure. it's not designed to work as a belt. Yeah. Hence the belt loops all the way around. Another cool thing too, which you can just see, I don't have, maybe you guys do, but we, we need to show a picture of this demonstration, but just the overall thickness of the pant in the thickest spot. So we use really thin belt loop material just to try to make it as thin as possible under your backpack when you're packing 80 pounds. So if you were to look at a comparative pant, call it a Sika Timberline pant or some other pant where the belt loop is, it's almost twice as thick right there. So just being diligent to make sure that those materials are as thin as can be. Minor detail, but it makes a difference if you're hiking 15 miles. It's knee pad compatible, doesn't come with knee pads, but most people already have a small stack of them in their gear closet. Um, yeah, so there's pockets in there. There's pockets in there. Inside. Pretty much any knee pad in there. Right. And got two back pockets as well. So with all the new products and like hot items right now, mm -hmm. this pant is for sure leading the charge. But they're not definitely not a super lightweight pant, you know. Yeah. Um, but the, again, it's a similar material as this as a jacket. So super breathable. It's a polyester nylon blend. So super breathable, super water resistant, dries very fast. Uh, we've been calling them midweight because you can get away with them in the early season with the big side vents and the breathability. Yeah. You can layer up underneath them, no different than anything else, and behind them is snow, no problem. You don't need it. I think it's important to really understand that, again, these are designed as a backpacking pant, mm -hmm. so they're not fleecy. They weren't, we weren't trying to make the quietest pant ever. Yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say they're loud, but they're designed for backpack hunts where it's more important to have water resistance dry fast than it is to have a super quiet pant. So if you want a, if you want a super quiet pant, they're these might not be the option for you, but if you want a really high-performing backpacking pant, that's that's really kind of what these were trying to fit the mold for. Again, also crosses over as a lifestyle piece, like yeah. you can wear these to work or around town just as appropriately as you could backpacking. 
Other people have asked questions too about are the side vents, are they meshed back so yeah. needles don't get in there? They're not, so you can unzip those pants underneath them so you can mm -hmm. get your the other layers. We were actually quite surprised after getting the finals done and pro through all the prototype process of just testing them with weight and frames of how much more comfortable they are. We thought they'd be very similar. Mm -hmm. But just this natural curve natural versus curve the kind of the pinch is just much more just a better natural. Like your yeah. body shape doesn't have those drastic angles in it. Just so you just get a much more natural fit, fit to your back and feel in it. Internal that. compression straps for anchoring stuff against the frame sheet in here. Not just having everything slunk to the bottom of the bag. And then this strap is capable of holding a holster here for internal carry of a handgun. So just like the veil, you can take the frame sheet out, shoulder straps off, the belt off, put it on an X-curve frame. Yeah, still fully compatible with our external frames. Yeah, this thing's sweet. It's just, I keep calling it like the Avail's big brother. Full-size belt on it. Like the Avail belt's pretty yeah. modest in comparison to this. This is a full-size packed belt. And the idea being that you sure are capable of carrying more weight in a 3200 cubic inch setup. So if you do have 50 pounds of something in there, um, the larger belt's gonna be more appropriate. Again, that bag, like price point, like we were talking about, that bag's 349. It's a pretty good value for, you know, you look at other yeah. packs comparative. I think um, those are gonna do quite well. It's a sweet bag. Yeah. Bag. The Solo is one of our best sellers. So same exact bag as the previous Solo, just again with that same built-in uh, spotting scope pocket built out, so the spotting scope's not taking up any internal room. You could fit a mega spotting scope in there because it comes out in the main bag. Yeah, yeah. the only design Slight difference is the that design. is this pocket added on the side for a spotting scope. Yeah. So we got a lot of guys that were buying that the Solo was like the right cubic inch, right capacity, the right design. Yep. But they were buying our spotting scope attachment, attaching it to the side, which worked well. But mm -hmm. when the pack's not completely full, it just doesn't ride perfect. So yeah. instead of that, doing that, we just built the spotting scope pocket in. Yeah. If you're not a spotting scope guy, it's not adding much weight. It's not in the way. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. Yeah, I like Simple, it. Simple, streamlined, lightweight, easy to use bag. Yeah, this solo has been around unchanged since 2012. Yeah. Um, so this is a nice, nice change up. You know, popular design. Yeah, I like it.